Hello again, everyone. I'm Matt Lachlan. Thank you so very much for joining us for our special conversation with Devils head coach Sheldon Keith. We asked all of you season ticket members, gave you the opportunity to supply a question for this session. We had hundreds of responses. Some of them, as you know, overlapped. And so we kind of called it down to the group that we are going to ask Sheldon today. Thank you, as always, for your support. The season ticket member is very near and dear to our heart, a big part of the Devils family, and we look forward to seeing you and enjoying the excitement of the upcoming season this year. Sheldon, it is good to see you once again. We last spoke on the day you were introduced as the Devils head coach. Thank you for carving out some time for us today. My pleasure, man. Happy to be here. Well, we'll get right to the questions because I know there is much still on your plate to do. Plus, you want to enjoy what remaining free time you have with the family. So let's get to the questions. And we have some from season ticket holders who are of a more recent vintage and some longtime season ticket holders as well. Josh Chavez kicks it off. He joined us in 2019. Out of all the head coaching jobs that were out there, what made you want to come to New Jersey? Well, I'll tell you, you know, things happened pretty quickly for me coming from the uh, playoffs and and, uh, and being eliminated by Boston there with Toronto. And then shortly after that, of course, you lose your job and you're in that process sort of wonder, wondering what might be next. Um, you start to think about, uh, you know, the positions that are available. And in my case, I happen to have two years remaining on my contract in Toronto and you start to think about family and, and all the time lost and the demands that come with the job and, and uh, maybe giving some time back to the family and, and uh, sort of regrouping and recharging and, and what have you. But, um, you know, you get a call from uh, uh, from Fitz there in Jersey, uh, Tom Fitzgerald, and, and you start to thinking now about the things that come with the possibility of getting involved in that process and potentially going to New Jersey and the things that come to mind. Uh, first is is the talent that's there and the players uh you know the group uh obviously not not happy uh, with the results last season but showed so much uh potential and reason for optimism uh you know in both you know at times in their play last year but certainly in, in 22 23 um with uh you know coaching against that team and just watching them from afar and and, and uh even if you weren't watching you just watch them climb the standings and and uh you, you get excited about that. Uh, so there's that process, um, you know, from a family perspective, being remaining in the East and in New, in New Jersey, a place that uh, is, uh, you know, not far from Toronto, relatively speaking to the, to the NHL. Um, yeah, all these things, you know, start to get excited and then you're spending time with Fitz and, and, and you're talking through things with him and you're getting to know him on a personal level. Um, all that stuff just gets you really excited and, and uh, fortunate that it worked out and, and I've been given the opportunity here to lead the Devils. You answered some of this next question in your response, but there's another part of it uh, that was asked. So I'll go to the question from Benjamin Novak. He too joining us in 2019 as a season ticket member. So you've made some observations about the Devils from afar, but now that you're if had the chance up close looking at video talking with the assistant coaches etc what what have you seen and what parts of the devil's culture would you like to continue and extend and what parts might you want to change well i think that's been a great process uh you know uh, learning more about what's gone on um to this point what's been established the personalities within the room uh both on a staffing level and from a player perspective uh you know that's that's something that uh you know i haven't necessarily gone through my 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 uh my hire in toronto with the maple leafs came mid-season and was uh you know i was elevated from the american hockey league to the nhl um Prior to being hired by the Toronto Marlies, I was I was hired mid-season coming from the junior A level to the OHL into the Ontario Hockey League and Sault Ste. Marine mid-season. I've never had a full off-season like this to really fully uh, be able to take advantage of the time and learn as much as you can. And I'm still learning every single day, of course, um, and, and will what, even when the players come in, you'll, you know, you'll learn each day. You'll have some opinions and some thoughts and things that have happened. But once you start working with with people um 
one-on-one -on -one or seeing them in their element, uh, you learn even more. But the culture, what I would say is, first of all, has, has got terrific people and starts at the top. Um, spending time with David Blitzer, uh, you know, and through the process of being hired, you can see, you know, how how passionate he is for Devils hockey, hockey in general, sports in general. Um, he is a great competitor and great supporter uh, and has been uh, terrific in leading things. And then all the way through the organization, um, there's just been great people to learn from. Um, so I, and talking to the players, I think there's a real culture and expectation of winning here, which they're very disappointed in what's happened in the past. And I think all through the organization, everybody feels that way. There's been absolute full commitment on all levels um, of anyone I've, I've interacted with to get it right and get back on track uh, right away. But yet the belief has never wavered in, in, in the, within the organization. So I think there's tremendous belief there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's on me to come in and uh, embrace the positive things that have helped uh, establish the organization to the point that there's one that has expectations, but then also push and challenge and, and inspire the group to, to, to meet and, and exceed those expectations. That leads us to Grant Resnick's question. What was the team missing last year that they had the year before, do you think? And how do you take this dynamic young group and get them back where they were? Well, I think there, there, there's so many different things you can look at, and, and you know, if, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking backwards. Quite frankly, uh, you know, I've done my work in doing that to try to be as informed as I can about what's occurred. But yeah, you know, if you really look at it, uh, you know, at a, at a snapshot uh, from last season, there's a lot of different things. As you, you know, obviously the team had a lot of injury uh, situations to very key players. Um, it was bringing along some young defensemen that were going through some growing pains, and because of injuries, were probably put into situations that weren't maybe necessarily the plan. Um, so, you know, those sorts of things contribute, and then, and then of course. Uh, like anything else, uh, you know, as results don't go in your favor, all of a sudden, yeah, the belief in, or the morale of the team may, may slip a little bit. And, and now, instead of expecting to win, you're 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 uh, you know maybe playing not to lose, or uh, sometimes instead of seeing the best and 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 uh, hoping for the best, you start to feel that the worst is going to happen, and then that starts to slip. So, you know, getting the confidence of the group is so important in any winning team they have a certain feel and a certain vibe. And I think uh, what's exciting is that this team is not that that feeling hasn't, hasn't, uh, hasn't disappeared. Um, there's so many players that are key members of a team that really was uh, you know, in the top class of the NHL not too long ago, um, yet are humbled by the situation the team went through last year. I think are very hungry and inspired to get it right and build something uh, sustainable together. You mentioned the opportunities that some young players got because of those injuries. Question from Bart Piella is, uh, what are your thoughts about the young core, the duo of Luke Hughes and Shimo Nemitz? Luke was going to play last year in the NHL. Shimo probably ticketed for a year in the A, but got a full taste basically of the NHL. Your thoughts? Both terrific uh, young players, clearly. Uh, that's why they were drafted where they were. Um, and, you know, for myself as someone who really is just looking ahead and, and uh, focusing on today and building forward, um, I think, you know, that myself and our, our entire organization um, and those players specifically will, will have benefited from the experience and uh, being thrown in the deep end, if you will, uh, with last season and having to, to do so much. Um, uh, they're, they're terrific young players. They're, they were going to be uh, elite players. Um, and, and now perhaps the experience, um, uh, experience that they've gained can, can help uh, expedite that, uh, which obviously uh, when you look at that and their growth and, and, then the, and the additions that we made on the blue line uh, as well, uh, can't help but be excited about, you know, sort of the backbone uh, the uh, you know, the team with, with the, with the defense uh, being in a real, real strong place. Brian Skolar wants to know, how would you describe your coaching style? I don't know. I, you know what? It's, I, 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 of course, anytime you go through a process trying to get hired, it's a struggle to, uh, to talk about yourself. I and mean, that's one thing I don't, I don't love to do quite honestly. And then a lot of that I would say is because, 
doesn't really matter how I feel about myself. It really matters how the people that you're impacting, how they feel um, when you're being, when they're being led by you. So uh, it's a tough question to answer all other than to say that um, I, I care about people. I care about what we're doing and I commit everything that I have to make uh, people. And in this case, our team or organization, um, the best it possibly can be. I'm committed to that fully. Um, and uh, sometimes that's pushing and inspiring people. Sometimes that's uh, challenging in them and telling them things that, that they uh, need to hear, maybe don't want to hear, but need to hear and being honest and, and being direct um, uh, with that. Uh, and uh, I think I've gained a lot of experience. I've coached at uh, essentially every level that there is to coach at. Uh, you know, from junior hockey to the American League to the NHL. You know, I still uh, still like to think of myself as a young coach uh, in our sport. Uh, yet I believe I've got lots of great experience that I can that I can uh, uh, lean on um, and the tremendous coaching staff uh, as well that I've come to know and respect uh, greatly um, that will support me. So, um, you know, I think, uh, uh, the players and the fans can expect a guy that's going to be going to be honest and direct, yet is going to be mindful of of uh, what I say and how I act and how it could impact the group. And some things will be done in, in a public setting, in a group setting. Some things will be done one on one. I think all of that is really the art of coaching, um, and uh, something that I I take great uh, pride in and being um, purposeful about because I do think ultimately. Uh, how you handle those situations uh, as a coach can greatly impact uh, the morale of, of the individual and, and ultimately the team, which, uh, as we just alluded to, uh, I think is so important uh, to have that confidence and that swagger uh, and belief that is so vital. You're still a young guy, definitely uh, in my eyes and in most uh, most others as well. You got some stripes, no question, but you're still a young guy in this league. Fred Romano wants to know what defensive changes might you be implementing? And you referenced some of the additions there, you know, Brett Pesci coming along and Brendan Dillon as well. Uh, so what might you change to decrease scoring chances against, which was a bit of a bugaboo last year from a devil's perspective? Yeah, it's no doubt this is going to be a focus from day one for us, uh, and it's uh, it's the foundation of any successful team. There's you know no question about that. I mean, there's a lot of elite teams in the NHL at generating and producing offense, and the New Jersey Devils certainly are one. We'll continue to lean in on that. Uh, that's a big part of who we are, without a doubt. But as I say, the foundation of any successful team is the ability to defend its net uh, and keep pucks out of the net ultimately. So that'll be a major priority and focus for us. That has to be a big part of our, our identity. Um, it's got to be difficult to get to our net and get to our goaltenders. Obviously, uh, we've got a great belief in our goal and in, in the goalies and Markstrom coming over uh, to uh, you know, to to take the lead for us there and to partner with Jake Allen. And we've got great support, great experience and leadership uh, in goal. But we're going to support those guys. We're going to be committed as a group to make it uh, a lot harder to get to our net. So there's going to be some tactical things that will change uh, inside of that, some some of the structures. Um, but really, it's going to be more about uh, about a mindset uh, for the team and committing to it. And, and I think every player knows that how important that is. But it's a, it's about us really putting it at the forefront and embracing it as a foundation to to our team and what we do, and then allow our offense and uh, our difference making ability to to come through. But uh, we want to make sure that there's a real strong foundation there, and that'll be established from day one to camp. We know that playoff. Playoff hockey is different from regular season hockey. It seems to me over the last, say, 10 years, as the increase of skill and the reduction of some of those holding penalties, restricting penalties, have allowed that skill to flourish, there's now even a bigger difference between the 82 games and the playoffs because then it becomes a real hard game to get to those 16 wins, which leads to Robert O'Connor's question. Because playoff teams must be physical, how do you increase the physicality of this team in order to make the club a more complete contender? And I'll add, what is the addition of guys like Dylan and, and Pesci, uh, some of the snarl uh, that uh, Cotter will bring? Uh, you know, what? how does that help? Well, the, the, the players you mentioned, uh, of course, do change sort of the identity of, uh, of the group a little bit, no question, uh, and, and you'll rely on those guys to bring it. But, you know, I look at physicality, it comes in different forms in our game, and, and 
um, different players have their own version of physicality that they can can bring. But, uh, you know, at its root for me, the term physicality in our game really is, is looking at it as a tool uh, in our game to uh, to drive your competitiveness and to give you an advantage uh, in the in the game, and each player brings that in their own way. Um, and but to lo- along the way, you're going to need players to step out of character a little bit at different times, at key moments. Um, you know, sometimes there's, that's the physicality of, of engaging in a physical battle and coming out with a puck, or it's establishing body positioning, um, or it's sticking up for a teammate, or maybe blocking a shot. Like there's so many different areas and levels of physicality within our sport that uh that are uh, important and they're they are um vital to embrace uh to have any level of success certainly in the playoffs as you mentioned of that there's no question but can't be denied or um ignored in the regular season that's really we have to foster that that identity and that culture within our group so um along with the defensive piece that we've already talked about being a priority that'll be another one we've got to increase the physicality as a group that'll come through puck pressure uh, and speed onto the puck and as i say every player has their own version of physicality that they're going to bring and we will ask for players to step outside of character every now and again because those are the things that ultimately do make the difference um, but uh, a consistency um, in 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 their own identity um, and bringing physicality to the game, uh, you know, it's going to look different for, for Jack Hughes than it is for Curtis McDermott, as an example. But th- they all both will have their own version of physicality that they're going to bring to be able to let their own game shine, no matter what the, the game dictates or, or the environment that we're in. No, that is music to a lot of fans' ears, of course. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention a Stefan Nason rejoining the club as well. He brings a little bit of that that edge and that physicality too. Hank Zanella, uh, a good friend, longtime season ticket holder, 1996 is when he first became a season ticket member, stops by the radio booth all the time. We enjoy the conversation with Hank. And he's just returned from Prague. So we're going to have a conversation with Hank about what we might do when the Devils play Buffalo there in the time leading up to Prague. But he wants to know, during your time with Toronto, your team's always had a potent power play, he states. Based on the current roster, do you have the pieces to continue this excellence? And if not, is there something that needs to be added? Well, I do think there's certainly great tools there. And I was fortunate to coach, you know, great players uh, in Toronto, no doubt. But, uh, you know, the, the skill sets are perhaps a, a little bit different. Um, but uh, elite players in their own right that we have to work with. And I think we have enough depth to have two units as well that can be uh, successful and can push and challenge one another. But uh, Jeremy Galton is coming in uh, and he'll he'll lead our power play and we'll work together um, uh, there. And and we have uh, uh, great players, like I said, on both units. We've got different looks. We've got different, you know, handedness uh, of defensemen that we can work with. Um, so there, there's some options there for sure. So we'll get to work on that and building out a plan. And, and, uh, like everything else, it comes through consistency and habits. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, obviously in doing that, then your skill starts to really come out, but, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get to work at that, but I'm excited about the group. Uh, the group produces offense at a really high level at five on five. And there's no reason why it shouldn't be able to do that consistently at five on four. Uh, we're going to stay in last century, the last century for our season ticket members. This one comes from a guy who's been with us since 1999. He and his family, Ken Siegel. We know he says you think highly of Jack Hughes, Sheldon, but who else on the roster is a standout player in your eyes? Well, I mean, uh, there's so many guys, and you'd hate to start uh, you know, pinpointing guys because there's each guy, I think, it brings so many different things. Um, you know, the, the top players, of course, they're, they're going to come to mind and jump off the page, but there's just, there's a lot of guys, I think, um, uh, especially as the, with the additions that have been made here, this is a well-rounded team with lots of depth, uh, players that can play multiple positions and, and, uh, contribute on both special teams. Uh, you know, guys that have, you know, guys that are going to be really good and skilled and playmaking guys are going to go to the net front. And I, I don't want to get into it at this point in, 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 in really singling out, uh, 
anyone in particular, my hope is that we've got everybody thriving and, um, and I'm excited to get to work, uh, uh, with, you know, with everyone that's going to be in camp and then ultimately, uh, travel with us out to Prague to start off the season and, and, uh, and get going. Um, and, you know, and I think our coaching staff shares in that, that we're just, uh, you know, we're refreshed and, and renewed on so many levels, um, whether it's myself coming in and, and some of the changes we've made uh, on the coaching side of things uh, and how we'll play. And then also the, of course, the, the player additions that have come. I think have the entire organization, whether you've been here or you're new like myself, uh, everyone is excited to, to get to work. A couple of more questions about hockey. And then our, our fans wanted to know some things about Sheldon Keefe, the individual. So uh, we'll wrap up with those. But the hockey questions are, and this one from Matt Caravello, coming from Toronto, you're obviously well-versed in media pressure, outside pressure. I mean, the spotlight burns so brightly in Toronto. How do you take some of the lessons you learned there and impart them or help this team, which may not face the same crushing pressure from the outside that exists in Toronto, but nonetheless, they want to win too. And there is pressure to perform. So how might some of the lessons you learned be imparted on those you're trying to elevate their play and get back to at least where we were two seasons ago? Yeah. You know what? All I could say to that is, is that I guess uh, I would say there's nothing that I haven't, haven't seen or experienced. Uh, and, and I've seen it at, at, at the highest level, perhaps we didn't get deep enough in the playoffs for it to really elevate. Uh, but I, I guess uh, the deeper you go in the playoffs, everyone, no matter where you are, you know, there's that the attention and, and, uh, and what have you is going to increase, but it's, it's on an everyday basis in Toronto. And I've experienced that. I think the biggest thing is just remain true to yourself. Keep the focus on the things that matter and the things that you can control. Uh, so that is the perspective I've gained, which comes through any experience in life, but certainly what I've been through as it relates to the media attention and, and the expectations that were on the team in Toronto. Um, and, but the reality is I felt well-equipped, even as, a, as someone who had never coached in the league uh, for that. And simply because um, everywhere that I've coached, I felt like there's expectations. First of all, I've only ever coached teams with expectations. Um, and I, I love that. That's I'm a competitor. That's where I want to be going to go back to your first question about what's exciting about, you know, New Jersey devils, uh, uh joining the New Jersey devils for me, you know, one of those things certainly was it's a team with expectations. It's a team um, because there's expectations. Well, there's going to be talent, and there's going to be you know a really good uh, group to work with. Uh, so I, I, everywhere I've ever coached, there's been expectations. So and everywhere I've everywhere I've coached, I started. I coached seven years at the junior A level in a small town in Pembroke, Ontario, um, in junior hockey, and, and every game I coached there, uh, certainly in playoffs that was the most important thing in my life. And there was a lot of people who loved our team and loved our game and our players had a lot at stake. Uh, I gave everything I had to it for that. So I put great expectations on myself and everywhere I've been has felt like I'm competing for the Stanley cup. Uh, so that experience isn't a whole lot different. All the other stuff is exterior, but without a doubt, you know, when you're a representative of, of uh, a fan base uh, such as Toronto, uh, as vast as it is, that's exciting. Um, that's exciting and it kind of it really gets you going. Coming to somewhere like New Jersey to me, um, perhaps it's a different market, but it doesn't change the passion. Uh, just right here on this interview alone, um, you all have been referencing specifically season ticket members um, and how long they've been. Uh, there's a personal connection to a team like this that I think maybe gets lost at sometimes when you're in a bigger market and all these sorts of things. And I'm excited for that. Um, and that's a little more to my roots, perhaps in the junior hockeys and um, and even at the point of my time with the Marlies, there's a lot of Leaf fans that support the Toronto Marlies, but there's also a group and a core of fans that supported us through that. There were true Marlies fans. I think that personal connection is something that um, that is um, uh, has me excited just the same. And as I said, through all the various experiences I've had at, at different levels, I, I feel equipped for anything that comes my way. Um, but uh, certainly um, the focus has to remain on what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, but uh, I'm excited to, uh, you know, to, to do my job and, and, and lead and, and uh, put something together that the Devils fans will be proud of. 
Really glad you mentioned the fans there and you have throughout this interview. I mean, they are the lifeblood of any team's existence. No fans, no game. Let's be honest. And they bring so much and mean so much. And you'll find out, I know you have already, you'll find out even more as the season unfolds, just how passionate and involved this fan base can be. They have a history of winning and they want to see it continue. You know, and, and just getting back to that question about pressure, right? This is the most competitive league with the best players in the world, best coaching staffs in the world. They want to win. I know it's a trite answer. From a media standpoint, you hate to hear that answer. No one can put more pressure on me than I put pressure on myself. But that is the God's honest truth. Everyone on any team, you know, it'll vary from day to day. They're human. But their compete level, their desire to perform for themselves and to show everyone on their team and around the league this is who I am. I got the goods. It just drives them. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's pressure everywhere, though Toronto is perhaps, from other standpoints, uh, a different animal altogether. But it doesn't matter where you're playing, man. You're out there to just play your best. These athletes are so uber competitive. It's unbelievable. No doubt. No All right. Uh, last one. These are a couple about uh, – you away from hockey, uh, Patricia Groider. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, what are some of your favorite things to do outside of hockey? Well, I'll tell you, uh, for the last number of years, um, my favorite thing to do is to spend time with my kids and wherever they lead me. They, I've got two young, uh, two boys, um, as, uh, uh, you know, they were at the, the press conference and it was, it was terrific to have them have them in New Jersey to be a part of that. But uh, they're now 12 and 14 and yeah, both uh, heavy into both hockey and lacrosse. Uh, and uh, that's kept my wife, Jackie, and I extremely busy to uh, to move them around and, and to be there for them. But that certainly has dominated any of the free time that I've had. Um, and just love watching them compete and, and being a part of that and, and just making so many great friendships along the way that come through your kids and their sports that they play. Um, and that's uh, taken us uh, as a lot of opportunities to travel, certainly as they've gotten older too, which uh, my wife and I love to we love to travel and love to get about, um, you know, we, we haven't ventured too far out, you know, uh, outside of North America, but uh, we, we, we love to travel and spend our time together. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big golfer, fisher. If I don't fish or golf or anything like that, it doesn't take up too much of my time. It's we got free time. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm focused on my, my family and my kids and trying to capitalize on that, uh, as much as I can. Um, and then otherwise, you know, you look at a sun off season such as this, I've stayed extremely busy with, with uh, just trying to um, learn about where we're at and what we've been through and, and who the people are and what they do and how to work best and, and support them as best I can. All of that is, is part of what I enjoy uh, the most. And, and uh, you know, if I have time to get to a, a concert or a show or a, or a ball game or something along the way to the off season, then we'll find our ways to do that too. So the last two questions are food questions combined. Mark Pilecki wanted to know, are you ready to enjoy Jersey pizza and bagels? Eric Whitlinger asked, are you okay switching from Canadian bacon to pork roll? Um, well, first on the Canadian bacon thing, I, what I've kind of learned through my travels, my wife's from Scottsdale, Arizona, so I spent a lot of times in the U.S. I think the only people who know what Canadian bacon are are people who don't live in Canada. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know where to go to get Canadian bacon here in Canada. Um, so there's that. But uh, pork <laughs> roll, um, I'll have to give that a try. But I, I, we're just so excited to try everything um that new jersey has to offer we've we've really enjoyed our trips out there our time that we've spent uh well brief and kind of in and out uh fleeting a little bit uh each time has been has been just terrific for us so um and and, and by the way anyone that i talk to uh players staff and trying to learn more about the area our people in our organization love living in New Jersey. Uh, and so many players have told me it's one of the best kept secrets in the NHL is how great it is. And I, and that to me was actually very much reflected in our free agency process and how quickly players wanted to come here and wanted to be a part of it. Um, and, and don't kid yourself. Hockey is a, is a big reason. Um, but when, when you start talking about folks with families and wives and kids, 
where they come to live is a major factor and there's been there was no hesitation and i think that we're starting to really spread obviously the organization as i mentioned the support of uh of the of uh david blitzer and and uh and that he's put in, everything's put into the organization is one thing but new jersey is uh is something that um has been really great in spending time there and that is uh, right through the organization and nothing but great things in, in their experience and time time spent and i'm looking forward to really uh, really, uh, you know, spending time and embracing that. And that's a perfect way to end this conversation. The questions were fabulous. I know our season ticket members excited to hear your thoughts on the upcoming season and a few other topics. Sheldon, thanks for sharing your time. Looking forward to it. The countdown is on. We'll be together in September and I can't wait for things to kick off. Thanks so much. My pleasure. And thanks again for our fans and season ticket members that uh, take the time to uh, submit questions and to listen uh, and your support of Devils Hockey. You're looking forward to uh, getting out there in the Peru and, and uh, uh, working in front of you and putting some, something together that you can be proud of. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your off season. And thank you fans for joining us, echoing Sheldon's thoughts. Enjoy the rest of the summer. We'll see you soon for Devils Hockey.